All right, let's do our second example using uh, the concepts of buoyancy. Let's run over this diagram. Here we have um, a solid rigid gate. It's a rectangular gate and it's four meters high and it's pinned at A so it can, can move like this. And up here at this point, actually, at this point we have we do have sort of a stopper, and it, it's just it's one force this way, um, keeping the gate closed when the water level rises. And here we have a cable running over a pulley. And here we have a submerged, I believe, is con no, it's not con it's just a one meter diameter um, cylindrical mass. So let me read you the problem: a one meter diameter cylindrical mass, right? So the diameter of this is one meter and it's a cylinder, so like a soup can, is connected to a two meter wide rectangular gate. So this gate is four meters high and it's two meters wide, so it's, I guess it's two meters coming into the camera, right? And the gate is to open when the water level, H, reaches or drops below 2.5 meters. So when H is 2.5 meters, the, the gate begins to open. And they want us to determine the required value for M. So they want us to figure out what the mass of this block is. What, what's the mass? M. Um, the very first thing you want to do is draw a free body diagram of either the block or the gate. Um, I don't know. We can, we can go ahead and draw the gate first. So let, let's do that. Well, the reason I'm drawing the gate first is because there's there's a couple interesting things going on. The tension in this rope is dependent on the buoyant force acting on the cylindrical mass. We also have a hinge at A, and it's a pin, so we have forces, reaction forces AY and AX. Oops, AX. Then we have the tension T, which I'll call T. And up here at this point, we said the gate begins to open when H is about 2.5 meters. So theoretically, it's, it's the force here is exactly zero, right? Because when H is 2.5, when, when the water is dropping level and H becomes 2.5 meters, the gate begins to open very, very slightly. So at that exact moment, that force up here is just zero, right? So we're not going to put anything there. Now, at two points, so we'll say h is equal to 2.5 meters, right? That's what we're solving for. So at 2.5 meters, if this is 4 meters, we can say, eh, that's about 2, a little bit more than 2. Which my pen isn't working. So this distance here is about 2.5 meters, right? And at 2.5 meters, that's when the gate begins to open. Now, since this is a surface that's submerged underwater, we're going to have a pressure distribution on the part that is submerged. And that pressure distribution, since this is zero pressure, it's going to look something like this, right? Like that. And we can use the force and the couple method, or we can just use the force at the centroid of the submerged surface. So the submerged surface is, is just that much, right? The force, the pressure at the centroid and we can replace it with a force at the centroid of the pressure distribution, which is a third distance from the base, right? Because we can do that because we know where the, the force is acting, right? If we didn't know, we'd place a force and couple at the centroid of the submerged surface. But since we know where the force is acting, since this is a triangle, we can replace it with a force at the pressure distribution, right? And if you, if you guys don't remember that, and go ahead and review those um, pressure, uh, pressure and forces under uh, or on submerged surfaces and gates and such. Um, so we can replace that at a third of the distance from the base of that triangle. Call it FP. So we have tension, we have FP, we have AX, we have AY, and that that's about it for the free body diagram of the the gate. Um, Maybe we can solve for FP. What's FP? 
Well, the force of the pressure is equal to the pressure at the centroid of the submerged surface, which is this, right? Times the area of the submerged surface only. Now, many people might just go ahead and do four times, you know, the, the two meter wide rectangular grade, but it's only the submerged part. The submerged part is only 2.5 meters high, so force P is equal to the pressure at the centroid, and the pressure at the centroid, remember, is, is gamma of H2O times the change in height times the area. So this is pressure at the centroid, this is area, right? So FP, what's FP? 9800 newton per meter cube, that's gamma of water, times the change in height, or the, the, I guess the height to the centroid of the submerged surface. And that's, since it's just, you know, one line, it's 2.5 divided by 2, right? The centroid is somewhere about there, of the submerged part only. So we'll say that 2.5 meters divided by 2. And the area, again, is the area of the submerged part. So it's 2.5 times the width was um, 2 meters, I believe. So 2.5 times 2. And if we figure this out, we say FP is equal to about 61 to 50. And so that's FP. That's the force of the pressure distribution acting on the gate at a height of uh, water is equal to 2.5 um, meters. Now, so we know FP, we don't really know the tension yet, but if we took the moment about A, we know FP, we know T, we don't need to know AY and AX because that's where we're taking the moment about. There's no distance from point A to point A, right? That doesn't make sense. So let's do that. So let's take the summation. <clears throat> the moment, or the sum of all the moments about point A, where counter, yeah, counterclockwise is positive, is equal to zero, right? The very first one is FP, right? And the distance to FP, okay, well, if we said this height was 2.5 meters, and we said FP is acting at a third of a distance from the base of this triangular pressure distribution, it's going to be 2.5 divided by 3, right? That's the distance, 2.5 divided by 3. Minus the tension, right? The tension is creating a, a clockwise uh, moment, right? So the tension minus the tension times, well, the distance from A to where the tension is, is 4 meters, right? So 4 meters, 4 meters is equal to 0. And if we plug in FP is equal to 61,250 newtons, we can say 61, let's do that, 61,250 times 2.5 divided by 3 minus the tension, which we don't know, but we can figure out, is equal to 0, right? And if we solve for T, that's just algebra, right? T, we get is about 127, or... 12,760.4 newtons. So that's that's the tension. So we know the tension. We know the force of the pressure distribution. We don't know Ay. We don't know Ax. But in order to solve for this block's um, mass, all we need to know is the tension in this cable, which we already found. And um, we can actually do that in the next video. So in the next video, we'll do... Um, We'll try to figure out the mass of this block. We'll use the concepts of buoyant force, the weights and tensions to figure that out.